bunch of morons! Why, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer. So, a few months back, I made a controller comparison video that highlighted the fact that all the controllers had 5 to 6 frames of lag as Game & Watch. This video had mostly a positive response, but then I got a bunch of comments that also said things like, Your music is too high, I can't hear you! And, well, I'll admit, that's a pretty legitimate claim. I had to go back and listen, and you guys were kinda right. Then there was the complaint that I used Game & Watch, who had a 4 frame jab as opposed to frame 1. Also the complaint that I should have used a CRT TV. And then that I should have been recording at a higher frame rate. Also that my entire video was pointless because there was potential lag. Then you have fanboys like this guy who missed the entire point of the video and won't let go of the idea that the GameCube controller is some sort of mystical god controller. So fine, let's redo this thing, and this time hopefully I can make it right and explain the point of the video. First off, the camera got upgraded to an iPhone 5S and I'm shooting this at 120 frames per second. That's two frames of camera for every frame of gameplay. I'm bound to get a more accurate result this time. Second, after doing some research, I've decided to use Little Mac for his frame one jab. What we're looking for is his arm going from this to this. Third, I'm using a CRT TV so that there is the least possible lag between devices. Does it look pretty? No. But is it effective? Yes. Fourth, I'm using my own setup to determine when the button is pressed. I have a wire taped to the A button that leads to an LED fan that has been tested to light up within one Super Smash Bros. frame, and a wire taped to my thumb. The moment they connect and the LEDs light up is when I start counting my frames. Fifth, I'm doing multiple takes and showing you the cleanest ones out of the bunch. And by multiple, I mean I hit the button at least 20 times on camera and picked four of the clearest, cleanest shots of the take. And finally, a disclaimer, because this is YouTube and heaven forbid someone give you the benefit of the doubt. This video in no way means to say that this much lag is present. This is only a comparison between control devices. Even if it took 60 frames for my light up to the jab, if they all took that long, then that means they are all the same. That is the point of the video, to indicate which controller scheme takes the longest. This also takes place with several cell phones, Wi-Fi, a Roku, a laptop, and all the controllers connected at once. This does not mean that during tournament play, a 3DS will be lagless. This is just meant to indicate lag in standard household use. So when your friend makes fun of you for preferring a wireless device when wired is available, you can point him to this video and say, look, here are multiple shots of my controller and how long it took compared to your controller. So give your head a shake. Okay, with that long-winded intro out of the way, let's get on with the comparison. Test 1, the Wii Remote. The Wii Remote and all its extensions have been under heated debate for lag especially. I may make a video about the lag comparisons of Brawl because that's when this debate started, but for now, I figured we'd start off with something a bit more relevant. So, LED light up, and seven frames later, Little Mac is jabbing his heart out. Test two, the nunchuck. So, the nunchuck. I had to do some thinking on this one. I could just hit A, but all that would do is further my point about the Wii mode, not necessarily the nunchuck itself. So, I modified the control scheme in Smash so that the Z button was the attack, so we could see potential lag in the nunchuck. Gotta keep things standard, right? So, lights up. And 7 frames of lag again. Test 3, the classic controller. The last of the controller extensions. Personally though, I prefer the Pro version myself. It just feels more comfy. But really, both have the same inputs and wiring. So let's give this a whirl. Lights and 7 frames. Test 4, the Wii U gamepad. This big chunky brick of a controller features not just an outward wireless signal for controls, but an incoming video feed for its built-in screen. Regardless, the LEDs will light up, and 7 frames later, Little Mac jabs. Test 5, the 3DS. In the comments of the last video, this one was rather controversial, as a lot of personal stories describe this thing as a little buggy at best. I'm quite frankly surprised this is even an option, but regardless, it is. So, LED light up, and 7 frames later, we have jab! Sweet! However, I'll be totally honest here, this one was hard to pick results from. It was about 50-50 on it being 7 frames and it being 8 frames. It wasn't exactly consistent. But even so, that's merely one frame. And if you are that concerned over one frame, I'm going to bet you aren't even using the 3DS in the first place. For casual gamers, I honestly see no issue in using this device. But if paranoia is your jam, then feel free to pick a different controller. Moving on. Test 6. The Pro Controller. 
arguably one of Nintendo's better controllers. I love the feel of it, and it works great for Smash. Or does it? LED light-up, and another 7 frames of lag. Test 7, the GameCube controller. So here we are now, the GameCube controller. Nintendo's gift to Smash, according to Melee fans. Personally, I love the controller just for the way it feels and for where the buttons are placed. Talk to others, though, and they'll tell you it's the best because it has the least amount of controller lag. So, LEDs, and again, seven whole frames. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, to sum up, I find it interesting how I used a character that starts up his jab three frames sooner, but ended up with one to two frames later on a TV that is said to have zero lag whatsoever. Although, to be fair, I've always thought Game & Watch's animation start at frame one, but the jab frame four. The only reason I used him last time was because he has so few... sprites? Poses? Whatever he has, he has so few of them it made it easier to see when the move started. But then again, the speed of Little Max jab makes it somewhat a breeze to see what's going on too. Ah well. Regardless, just to be clear, the point of this video is not to say that there is 7 frames of lag, or possibly 8 on the 3DS, but to say that, that all the controllers, using the exact same conditions, tested exactly the same. All of them got 7 frames of lag. There is no faster controller as they all do their job at the exact same pace. So, next time someone rags on you for using the Nunchuck or Wiimote or Classic Controller, all you gotta do is... Hit them with the Wiimote. Hit them with the Wiimote and Nunchuck. Hit them with the Classic Controller. Hit them with the GameCube Controller. Anyway, that was my thing. Pick the controller you want in the comfort of your own home. They're all the same in terms of speed, and this lag debate is really the biggest non-issue in the home. It's kind of ridiculous. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer.